Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in um, for our e-week presentation. We are with the Duval Laboratory at Case Western Reserve University. I'm Bethany. I'm Laura. And off to the side is Priyanka, and she will be answering your questions in the chat. Yeah, so we'll be asking for your participation throughout this. So if you could just type your answers or questions in the chat, um, that would be the best way to uh, communicate with us. So with that, we'll start with, um, today you're gonna be helping us find our radioactive puppy. So our friend, Mr. Thorium was walking through the park one day with his dog, Pluto, which is short for plutonium. And one day she ran off. And so Mr. Thorium's freaking out, wants to find his dog Pluto and goes to his good friend, Dr. Duval, who is a radiochemist. Now, because Pluto is radioactive, um, Dr. Duval knows that there's a few different types of ways that we can um, detect her because she's radioactive. Um, we can detect the radiation with a Geiger counter. And if we find an object that has radiation from something that she touched, we can then put that um, material into our alpha spectrometer to then identify it. So let's use the Geiger counter to see what might be radioactive. Do you see anything in the park we can test for radioactivity? If you do, type it in the chat. Ah, the mouse. Yeah, so we can test the mouse. Is there anything else we might want to test? Maybe the paw prints? We can test the paw prints. And the mouse, yeah, okay. All right, so let's start there. So let's test the mouse and the paw prints. And if we need to, we can come back and find some more things. Okay, so we showed you a picture of this, but this is a Geiger counter. And how a Geiger counter works is it detects radiation. So when we hear a noise and we see this go up, we will have radiation. Currently, we have background radiation which is just something that exists all around us, but it's not detecting strong amounts of radiation. So let's test the mouse. So as we move the sensor closer to the mouse, let's see if that needle goes up. Does the needle go up? Yes, so that is radioactive. So that mouse has radiation. Let's test the paw print. Oh, here goes the mouse. Is the paw print radioactive? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. So let's go back to the park and look at some other things that we might be able to test because we want to get a big sample to go back to the lab. So we already found the paw print that's radioactive in the mouse. Oh, someone's saying the ball. Where's the ball? Yeah, so we can look at the soccer ball next. All right. So we have the soccer ball. I'll turn the sound back on. Let's test to see if this is radioactive. Do we see it go up when the sensor is by the ball? Not really. No, not really. So this is not radioactive. All right, and then I would say the other things we might want to test. How about the bow? The bow is a good one. And then I say we also just test the duck to see what we find. So let's go back. Oh, I can 
my bed over there. Okay, so here's the bow. Is the bow radioactive? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and then last but not least, the duck. Is the duck radioactive? Yes. Awesome. So let's take these back to the lab and test them. Cool. So now we're going to put them in the alpha spectrometer. Let's start with the paw print because dogs have paws. So do you see a peak that matches the paw print? Oh, that's correct. Someone's saying U-238. Yeah, so as you said, uranium-238 or U-238 matches the paw print. And we are looking for plutonium-239. But whose paw print did we find? We found the paw print of Yuri, Pluto's friend. She's a cat. So, even though we didn't find an object that corresponded to plutonium or our dog Pluto, we know that the spectra is supposed to look like the one on the left for plutonium to 39. So which object matches? Yeah, Ooh. you got it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, so we know that the bow um, was touched by Pluto. And so that gives us um, another hint for us on our path to find Pluto. So if we go back to our trail, we end up uh, going to this stream. So we're gonna look for clues again to check to see if anything's radioactive, which will let us know that Pluto's been here. Um, is there anything that you would wanna test at the Geiger counter before moving forward again? Which object? Oh, the rock. Yeah, let's test the rock. All right, so it's hard to see, but this is a rock. Very tiny rock. It is rock. Yeah. Okay. So again, we have the Geiger counter. Oh, I know. <laughs> so we take it away. <laughs> Gotta let it go back to background. But as we approach the rock, is the rock radioactive? Yes. yes the rock is very radioactive. <laughs> so what do you think our next step should be? So the next step can be putting it back in the alpha spectrometer. Okay, so now, yes, like Maura said, we know that the rock is radioactive. So let's make sure that it's because of Pluto, so the plutonium to 39 and not anything else. Does it match? Yeah. Yeah, so we know for sure that Pluto has touched this rock, and so we're on the correct path to find her. Okay, so we followed the stream with our Geiger counter, and that led us to a dog park. That makes sense, because Pluto loves the dog park. So let's keep using this to see where she went. But oh no, our reading stopped at the wall. Why is that? So much like um, when we go to the dentist, we get x-rays um, to look at our teeth and x-rays are a type of radiation. You know, at the dentist, you get a lead vest to go over your chest and that's to stop any of the radiation coming into your chest. So just like how that works at the dentist, we um, were stopped at the wall. We weren't able to detect radiation because it couldn't penetrate the wall. And so let's test that theory um, in real time with our radioactive rock. And we can show you how shielding stops radiation. Okay, so we remember our rock was very radioactive. So, oh my gosh. So to show it, again, we're gonna show you, that is a lot of radiation. So now let's try to put this metal plate in between. And it's a very thick metal plate. 
And when we do that, we don't see any, but if we remove the plate, the radiation is back. So based on that, where do we think Pluto went? Do we think it went, or Pluto went back into the dog park or past yeah, the wall? Are, yeah. Good job. So we go behind the wall to pick it back up the trail again. And the trail led us back to Mr. Thorium's house, into his backyard, into Pluto's dog house. But where's Pluto? Where do you think Pluto is? <laughs> Inside. <laughs> Good job. Um, okay, so you can go to the next slide. So thank you so much for helping us find Pluto, and we hope you learned about nuclear forensics today. Just to recap, what did we learn? We learned that radiation can be detected and we use the Geiger counter to do that. And then if we found something radioactive, we wanted to match what um, element or material it was coming from, we use the alpha spectrometer. Um, and we also know that radiation can be stopped by surfaces due to radiation shielding. So with that, we'd like to open it up to any questions you might have about radiation in general, anything that we went over in the presentation. Um, yeah, now's, now's the time that we can answer your questions. Yeah, and please put it in the chat so we can answer. Okay. All right, maybe instead we're just going to teach you a little more about radiation and then you might have some more questions. Okay, so in general, do you all know what radiation is? Um, we have a graph here, but before coming to this presentation, did you have a general idea about what radiation is, like where you can find it? Have you learned about it in school? No? No. Okay. Okay, and one of you did learn about it. So radiation is actually a whole spectrum. It's anything that's a wave. So there's radio waves, microwaves, um, infrared, there's visible, so you know that um, light, we are able to see um, in the visible range, we're able to pick up colors in the visible range, and that's also a wavelength. The sun is always emitting radiation, that's UV radiation. Um, and then the more, um, the other types of radiation that you hear about, like x-rays or gamma rays, those are more intense um, uh, wavelengths and um, are the types of radiations that we work in uh, as a radiochemist or a nuclear engineer. Um, and that type of radiation is called ionizing radiation. And so it's at very short wavelengths, whereas the other ones like from your cell phone or microwaves are very long and they don't penetrate um, and interact with matter in the same ways ionizing radiation does. And so do you want to talk about what ionizing radiation is? Yeah, okay. so ionizing radiation is the type of radiation you'll need shielding from, right? Because it's a type of radiation that you're gonna get an X-ray with. It's a type of radiation that, um, i trying to think what else besides X-ray, but that you're gonna get from that kind of thing that you need to shield yourself from. So here is an example of different types of radiation and how we shield them. There are some types of radiation that can just be stopped by a piece of paper. And there are other types like the one we saw today, that we needed a really big piece of metal to stop it. So let's talk about where we find radiation naturally. We can find radiation, funny enough, in bananas. Bananas are slightly radioactive. They have potassium-40, which is a radioactive isotope. And bananas are not a scary thing. We eat bananas regularly. It is not bad for you to eat bananas. Um, but they are radioactive. And so let's compare things to in terms of how many bananas we would have to eat. So if we went to a hospital to get an x-ray for our arm, that would be the same as eating 10 bananas. It's not bad. Oh my gosh, thank you. 
it's not bad for you to eat a banana and it's not bad for you to get an x-ray. So where else do you think we can find radiation? Uh, where else do you think we can find radiation in nature? The sun. Ooh, yes. Yeah, like Bethany said, we get UV radiation from the sun. Rocks. We did see we have radioactive rocks today. And to the side, there are also some naturally occurring radioactive rocks. So who knows? Next time you're at the park, you might find one. And the one that we worked with today um, is the uraninite, which is on the bottom row of the radioactive minerals. Um, and so it actually has uh, uranium in it, which is also used to power um, nuclear power plants. Yeah, and fun fact, living by a nuclear power plant is the same as eating three bananas, and that's over a year. So that's not bad at all. Mm -mm. So after that, do you have any more questions about radiation? Do you have this yeah, one? Um, do you want to talk about it? Or okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so ionizing radiation, so the types that we would need shielding from, um, it all comes from atoms. So atom is the smallest unit of matter, um, and it's made out of neutrons, protons, and electrons. And an atom will become unstable if there's a certain number of neutrons and protons that don't um, balance each other out. And so when that happens, that nucleus of the atom will become unstable. And so then um, radioactive particles or um, radioactive, uh, I guess, waves will come off of that atom then to stabilize it. And so if we go back to that shielding slide, so there's, alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, x-rays, and neutrons. Um, those are the five types of ionizing radiation that can come from a nucleus being unstable or a particle colliding with a the nucleus, then making it unstable, and then producing those particles. Another way to think about it is that, so everything is made up of atoms, right? You're made up of atoms, this Geiger counter is made up of atoms. When the atom gets really uncomfortable, it wants to change to be more comfortable. And so the way it does that is it releases radiation to become more comfortable and stable. That was a great question. Yeah, thank you for asking questions. Does anyone else have a question? Um, okay, if not, you can talk about the QR code. Oh yeah, so we're gonna show you the QR code really quick, and that way you can visit. Is it our website? Oh yeah, so you can look at the QR code for more information about radiation. We've made handouts for this before, so if you would like to know more about radiation or more about shielding, this is your place to find it. And if you have any other questions for us, feel free to reach out. We are Duval Lab at Case Western. Yeah, and so we're done with the presentation, but if you would like to stay and ask us any questions, we will be sticking around. So thank, thank you. you.